Hello students. So today we are still in chapter 9 looking at perfect competition. We looked at individual firms in the previous episodes. Now we're going to combine them all together and look at the market supply. So what is the total supply from all the firms in the industry. We'll look at that in both the short run and in the long run. So we learned earlier that the firm's supply curve, the individual firm's supply curve is just the marginal cost curve up until a point where they would shut down. So you get that just by adding together the individual firm supply curves. So here, if the price is $4, then firm one provides 20 units. At that same price, firm two provides, it looks like about 12 units. So 20 plus 12 is 32. So the market's supplying 32 units if the price is four. So you put that point on the graph over here. If price were to fall to three, then firm one's going to provide 15. Firm two provides about, looks like about 10. So 15 and 10 is 25. That means the market is supplying a total of 25 units. Same is also true for the other points. Price is two, then firm one provides this much, firm two provides that amount, so you add it together, you get the market supply, etc. Now where things are a bit different is that if price falls below one, you can see that both firms are shutting down here. If both firms shut down, that means that market supply is going to be zero. So that's why our graph stops at a price of one. So we're in the short run here. So that means that it obeys our short run rule for shutting down. That rule was price less than average variable cost. If you need a quick refresher on that, go back to one of our earlier episodes where we talk about that in a bit more depth. So not too hard to put together the firms, the, um, the market supply curve in the short run. In the long run, here's what's going to happen. We established earlier, this is the condition you have in the long run. Price equals marginal cost is the profit maximization condition. We had the zero economic profits in the long run as well. Recall our intuition for that. If economic profits were positive, then new firms would jump in and that would push down profits for the others. So there's more competition now. If economic profits were negative, then some of the old firms would leave and that would keep happening until profits would be zero again. So when is our profit zero? That's when your revenue per unit price is the same as your average cost per unit, ATC. So when all this is true, we're saying the firm is maximizing profit and that those maximized profits are zero. So here's what that looks like on a graph. So our blue line is average total cost. Our gold line here is marginal cost. So we have to have price being where equals marginal cost. So touching that marginal cost curve we also have to have price equal to average total cost. It has to cross both the gold line and that blue line. So recall from chapter eight, we said that marginal costs equal average total costs at the point where average total costs are minimized. So it's always gonna be at this bottom point over here. So each individual firm is doing that at the market price. So that means you'll get this flat supply curve at the market price. So no firm can raise prices or no firm can lower prices because we have everyone being a price taker. So remember our story earlier about what perfect competition was. Every individual firm is just too small on its own to influence price. So if everyone else is selling at a price of 10 and you try to sell at a price of 11, no one's going to buy from you. They're just going to go from your competitors because you're all selling the same thing, so why pay more? Also, there's no reason for you to try to undercut everyone. If you can sell at a price of 10, why offer a price of 9 if you can already sell your goods already? 
just means making less money. So each individual firm is doing the same thing, and that gives you this flat market supply curve. Now, supply we saw could slope upwards in the short run, like it did back over here. In the long run, though, it's flat because all firms are producing at the same point. So there's a difference between short-run supply and long-run supply. So now we'll see how the market can adjust if there are changes, like a shift in demand. So let's say that demand starts out here, this old demand curve, D0. Then demand is going to fall. It's going to drop back to D1. Here's how the market is going to react. So once demand falls, you go to the short run supply curve and you see that price will fall. And that's going to mean that temporarily several firms will be running losses. A lot of firms are going to be unprofitable. Now in the short run, firms can be unprofitable. That can happen. We saw that in a couple of examples. The long run, though, is different. In the long run, that free entry and free exit condition applies. That means that firms that are already there can just leave the market without paying any additional cost. So my standard example of a fixed cost would be things like you got to pay rent to your landlord. So in the short run, your lease is still in effect and you're still paying rent even though you're not making a profit, so you're stuck with a loss temporarily. In the long run, though, your lease expires and you're not forced to renew it. So once your lease expires, you can just quit and go home and go out of business. So eventually enough firms are going to leave the market, and when firms leave the market, that's going to shift the supply curve back. So supply shifts from S0 to S1, and once enough firms leave the market, now we're back on our long run supply curve and we're back to zero profits. So that's how the market adjusts. So first demand can go up or go down, and then in response, firms can either enter or leave the market, and that'll continue until you get back to this long run equilibrium. So the reminder, once again, just because you have zero economic profits does not mean you can't have zero accounting profits. So economic profits include your opportunity costs. So if you could have earned 50000 from your old job and your business is also earning 50000 then your business earns just enough to cover your opportunity cost. So economic profits would be zero in that case. So firms could be making money on paper even though their economic profits are zero. There's no contradiction there. We had some more examples of that earlier back in chapter eight. So that's how the market would react to a drop in demand. Here's what happens if demand shifts out. So we start over here in equilibrium. We have short run supply in red and we have long run supply here, the flat blue line. We also have our original demand curve in green, D0. So maybe something happens in the market that causes demand to shift out. So maybe um, maybe the goods we're selling become fashionable or trendy in some way and people start wanting to buy more of them. That shifts demand out. In the short run, that's going to increase prices and that's going to make firms profitable temporarily. Now in the long run though, those temporary profits aren't sustainable. That's because there is that free entry condition. New firms can enter the market and because that market is profitable, they're going to want to do that. They have an incentive to enter the market. So new firms jump in. When new firms jump in, that's going to increase supply. So supply is going to shift out from S0 to S1. And that glut of new supply is going to drive down prices. So price temporarily jumped up over here. Now it's going to go back down to its long run equilibrium. 
So when prices fall back down to normal, that's going to get rid of those economic profits. We're back to zero economic profits, and that means that we are back to long run equilibrium. So it's a very similar story to what we saw when demand shifts back. So either way, once demand shifts, you get a temporary profit or a temporary loss, but then a long run, new firms enter or old firms leave, and that brings profits back down to zero. So you always get zero economic profits in the long run. So that wraps up chapter nine, our chapter on perfect competition. In our next chapter, chapter 10, we'll look at the other extreme. We'll look at what happens when there is a monopoly. So stay tuned for the next episode in this series. In the meantime, take care and stay healthy.